when your plan and technology fails, here's how you still effectively communicate. So signaling is pretty important. Your technology is going to fail, your radios aren't always going to work, and you need to be able to still have a plan in order to help communicate with people. Not just that, you know, things are wrong and bad, but also telling them what direction you might be and might be going, held up, all that sort of stuff. So signaling should be considered part of your pace plan to begin with. Now with that, what makes a good signal? Well, when we're looking at signals, we're looking at a couple different factors. One is the size, go big and go home. The second is going to be the shape, making sure that it contrasts with the environment that you're in so that it gives you a good feedback and it stands out. Next is going to be shine. You want something that's going to draw attention. People like shiny things. It draws their eye and they stay attracted to it. And then the next is going to be sound. The louder, the better, whether that's visually or actually audible. If you can get somebody's attention with a signal mirror in order to get you back home, by all means do it. If not, do something that is as loud as possible in order to draw attention to your location so that they can come pick you up faster. Before you go out, you should have already told somebody who's not going with you where it is you're going. That little bit will save you so much time, headache and hassle, not just for you, but if something were to go on and say you don't follow your primary plan, somebody can now find you. and It reduces the amount of time for them to find you. So, first tell somebody. Second, if you do need to get a hold of somebody's attention and your other forms of communication aren't working, you got two primary ways of actually signaling for somebody, and those are gonna be either manufactured or improvised method. Now, a really common one that lots of people think about is a signaling fire. That's not it. This is a signaling fire. So when you're starting off to prepare your signal fire beforehand or your smoke signal, smoke generator, I don't care what you want to call it, all it does the same thing. You need to make sure that you have enough dry wood in order to get it going. It takes a lot of work, takes a lot of energy, uh, but you also need to stack it appropriately. Create a platform, keep it elevated off of the ground, and then you start building every single step of your preps for a fire between your tinder, your kindling, and your fuel and you stack it on top of each other appropriately. So all you have to do is reach in and light where your tinder is and everything else should just take off from there. The only addition that you're doing to it as opposed to just a strict fire is you're adding a lot of green vegetation up top. This is gonna to do two things for us in an environment like this. One, all that green vegetation is actually going to catch the heat and keep it in there longer and it will actually burn a hotter fire. Second thing that it's gonna do is all that heat from the fire is actually going to evaporate all the moisture out of the green vegetation and create a ginormous smoke plume that's gonna be white and visible for miles around. So signal mirrors are one of the major effective manufactured ways in order to get somebody's attention. As long as you have sunlight, or technically you can even still use the moon if you have high luminant evening, you can utilize that light in order to bounce it back at whatever it is you wanna hit. And with some of the modern manufactured signal mirrors, you can actually aim it just like you would a red dot on a rifle. So if you know how to do that and read instructions that are printed on the back for all my uh, Army and Marine friends, uh, it's pretty dummy proof. All you have to do is be able to read and apply it. The mirror's built with this little mesh thing on the inside. What you do is you collect the sunlight on the back of your hand and then find that sunlight through the mesh on the viewing window. And then once you have full power sun with it, you can use your hand to kind of guide you into the place and then take your hand out of the way. And you'll end up having a little fireball or a red dot in the mesh that you can utilize to pulse fire a target with like pinpoint accuracy. That's So amazing. you can literally hit small minuscule targets like you would a rifle with this little mirror. All right, let me try this. So you don't have full power sun, so it's gonna be harder to do. But if you get that light right on your hand first, yeah. and then bring it up towards the target like a slingshot. Oh, where is this thing? All right, so the sun's drone? right here. Drone is just to the right of it. Okay, I see now. Yep, so right lights there. down on your forearm. Right, so you're about to get full sun. So bring the mirror 
to reflect on the back of your hand. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Bring it's it down up, on your forearm. Up, 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 there. Now guide it with the corners. You see the fireball inside of the mesh? Oh uh, yeah, hold on, I lost it. Right. Pretty good sign of yep. it. You got it? Yep. There it is, there's that red dot. You see it? That's insane. It's a red dot concept. It's not an actual red right, dot. Right, right. It's camera almost behind more it? like an amber. Maybe. It, you have to get really close and the focus is weird. It is, but you have something to aim with. You do. Hey, what's going on guys? Let's take a minute and step out of the elements to talk about one of our sponsors for this episode because number one, they're an awesome sponsor. And number two, it ensures we can keep bringing good content to you guys every single week. So this week, we're talking about Tack Pack. If you guys happen to have a little bit of extra cash flow and you enjoy tinkering with cool gear, maybe some products that haven't hit the market yet or some other stuff that you didn't know you could get on sale or at a really good price point, you should check out Tack Pack. Here's how it works. You spend a couple of bucks, more like $140. Uh, at different price points, you can choose how much money you actually want to invest, but they will send you product that is far greater than the amount of money that you're actually investing in. So for example, with this Tack Pack box, you'd be getting a Reptilla grip. I've used these, they're fantastic. Look forward to putting these on one of our DC guns. You also get a cross machine and tool handguard. These are actually really nice handguards. If you guys haven't played with cross machine and tool, they make really quality stuff. Go check them out, but that's a stellar handguard, especially just to receive in a box and you're only spending 140 bucks. A nice full tang SOG knife. That's pretty stellar. A Battle Arms Titanium Nitride Bolt Carrier Group. Nice to have some extra parts on hand, even if you're not building a complete gun. Good to have something like a, uh, an extra bolt. Uh, a cool t-shirt. Everyone needs a good cool t-shirt, right? Beep some butthead. And then also some stickers and patches. So if you guys are someone who does like to tinker, you have a little bit of extra cash flow, and you're looking to uh, play with some cool gear, it's floating around out there in the industry, go check out Tack Pack. So another popular one that people are gravitating now to is uh, the VS-17 panel. Again, it's like a military issued one. You can find them on eBay or anywhere else. Uh, it's just a simple contrasting piece of material that gives you that coloration in order to really stand out literally in any environment. Now, the problem is, is with some of these, if it's directly on the ground, up at altitudes, you're not going to be able to see it very well. So what you need to do when you're setting them up is instead of having it just sitting on the ground, you guys need to grab corners and find a way of securing it so this panel ends up elevated off the ground and actually casts its own shadow. That shadow being linear and straight angles is actually going to draw more attention than the color itself. The color is actually going to allow them once they're focusing on something that is standing out and not matching with the environment now they can focus in and start seeing the difference in coloration in order to actually see it better so one of the other things you can do with the vs17 panel is actually use it, utilizing it in order to show direction so if you see on the corners and the edges they have these snap buttons and they're designed so that you can attach multiple panels together in order to create very long chains in order to allow a linear direction to be displayed so you can create a large arrow as it's displayed for a ground to air signal out of these or uh, if you wanted you can even attach the 550 cord and drag it across the ground and then they can follow the line that it's creating with the movement and contrast to the environment in order to figure out what direction they should be looking to find you so one of the improvised ones that you could also do in a wooden environment it's going to be a flagpole. You're literally surrounded by a bunch of trees. Just take one down, attach a piece of material in order to provide contrast and movement, and you got yourself a flagpole. All right, so for the flagpole, we need something that's going to be obviously like a flagpole. Really tall, really long, and really sturdy. So this green uh, lodgepole pine is actually going to be perfect for us. Uh, have at it, Drew. Have fun. What we're gonna do is we're gonna attach a mylar blanket for shine and movement over at the tip. And then at the base of the pole, we're going to lash it against a fixed structure like a tree already, uh, just a little bit up, say like four or five feet, so that we can use it as a counter lever 
and lift it up and then lash the bottom up so it holds it at an angle. So it just sits out there out in the open with a nice draping reflective surface in order to catch some uh, sunlight. So something to think about if you're going to try to use a mylar blanket as a signaling device is one, your environment. You need the signal to contrast with what's around you. So if you're in a snowy environment, surrounded by trees, having a reflective surface on one side and a green surface on the other might not be the best option. It's designed to blend into those environments in order to keep you warm, not necessarily stand out. Whereas having like a bright pink or bright orange is gonna be way more reflective. So you don't always get to choose when you want to be able to signal. The choice is made for you. And sometimes nighttime is the right time and the daytime signals will not work. You can make all the smoke that you want, it won't be seen. So you have to go with a little bit of a different route. You need to build as much contrast to the dark and the best way to do that was with light. Another option is to create as much light as possible. Now there's a lot of devices out there nowadays for signaling aircraft and everything else like that. You see all the Hellstars and all the different stuff. The most primitive way of keeping something that's going to work 100% of the time is to have a good package and sealed glow stick. All you have to do is find something, crack it open, shake it up, and you'll get a nice glow effect throughout the entire process. Then you can take 550 cord, attach it onto it, and then if I want to signal somebody in a horizontal plane, I can do a wagon wheel. Yep, slip down my hand there. Get notice, or if it's an asset that's over top that I need to get hold of, I can butt saw them, increasing the size of a little glow stick in order to make a really large signal so everybody can see it and actually pinpoint exactly where I am. So when you're in the dark, sometimes visuals are very, very difficult to see. So one of the other ways is creating as much sound as possible. I'll lung capacity differs from each individual person, but eventually your throat's also going to give out if you're just trying to yell and scream, which is why most of the time it's recommended to bring a whistle of some sort with you on any type of expedition or outing. Now, a lot of backpacks actually come with these little clips that have a whistle attached to them. So that if something were to happen, you can slide it off and then just start blowing to your heart's content or until somebody finds you and takes the whistle out of your mouth and then you go home. So there's a lot of other ways of doing it. You can get sports whistles, you can improvise a whistle from the environment around you, lots of different options. The key is to make as much noise as possible so somebody comes and tries to make it stop. So remember guys, it's important to understand the principles behind things. Your electronics are gonna die, your modern tech is going to fail at soon, some point or later. So it's always good to have a backup plan and being able to go back to the primitive basics is always something that we can fall back onto. He looks so good. I don't even know what to say. No, <laughs> seriously though, uh, it's been awesome having Mitch here. I uh, hope you guys learned a lot. I know we did as well. Um, this whole Agonic team, you can find them at liveagonic.com. But we've got uh, Eric and Zach here who uh, helped us out with this production. And uh, thanks guys, hope you enjoyed it. Also, if you guys do want to support us, you can hop on Patreon. You get access to our videos ahead of time. We also have some pretty cool merch from beanies to hats to hoodies, coffee cups, lots of sort of stuff. That way you can uh, show all of your friends that you watch YouTube or something. I don't know, but it does support us. So thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you all next time. See your Jesus. I thought I heard the old man say, Leave her, darling, leave her.